Lesson 41, I will find and use a pattern to calculate the sum of all fractional parts between 0 and 1. So this is the last lesson in this module. And what we're going to do today is we're going to be looking for patterns so that we can calculate the sum. So remember, think about what you know about the word sum. Well, sum means the answer to an addition problem. So we're going to be adding some fractions, and our fractional parts are going to be between 0 and 1. And we're going to be looking for some patterns to find how we can add these a little bit faster. So I'm going to tell you that we're not going to be using our math journals today, that we are going to go right straight to our problem set. So I want you to go ahead and get out your problem set, and I want you to notice that you're going to look at this and you're going to say, well, this looks kind of easy. And it is easy. We could just go through here and add all of these together. That's what we've done in the past, and then we could just convert this from an improper fraction to a mixed number. We could, but remember, our objective is to find patterns. So because these are thirds, to save us the trouble, <clears throat> well, let me put it to you this way. I'm going to solve this problem. I don't want you to do this with me. I want you to just watch. Okay, let's just add all these together. So 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 2 is 2, or this is 3, and then 3 plus 3, so I've got 6 thirds. So then I have to do this. So I have to say, okay, well, six thirds is the same thing as three thirds and three thirds and three thirds is one, one. So this would be equal to two. So that would definitely be one way to solve it. Okay. So remember I told you don't solve it that way. I just want you to look. All right. Now that's, that would certainly get us the answer, but today we're looking for patterns. So since we are talking about thirds, I want to look for numbers that I can add together. That's going to give me a whole. Like what if I took the zero thirds, which has no value, and I added it to three thirds? What would that get me? It would get me three thirds or one whole. Well, what if I took this one third and this two thirds and added these together? This will give me what? Three thirds, which is equal to one whole. So I could say one plus one equals two. Okay, let's try one more. <clears throat> so now we're talking about fourths. So I'm trying to make four fourths because that's equal to one whole. Okay, so zero fourths and four fourths is equal to one. Do you see anything else that equals four fourths? Well, what about one fourth and three fourths? That equals four fourths. So you add that together, you have one whole. And then we don't have anything to add this to, so I'm going to circle it. So I've got one plus one, which is equal to two. And then I've got this fraction left over, which is two fourths. So I have two and two fourths, or you could say two and a half, right? All right, so let's look for some more patterns. All right, so obviously the zero fifths and five fifths is going to make one. Do you see any other ways to make one? Remember, we're trying to get to five fifths because these are fifths. So what about one fifth and four fifths? That would be equal to one. And then what about two-fifths and three-fifths? What's that equal? It equals five-fifths. So this is another one. So now I've got one plus one plus one, so this equals three. All right, so hopefully you're kind of starting to get the hang of this. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and look for groups of one. Remember, these are sixes, so I'm trying to make six sixes. So go ahead and pause the video, and then come back after you've done as much of this problem as you can. Okay, so hopefully you thought to yourself, well, I can do 0, 6, and 6, 6, because we've been doing that all along, and that equals 1. And what about 1, 6, and 5, 6? That equals 1. What about 2, 6's and 4, 6's? That equals 1. And then I've got this 3, 6's left over. So now I've got 1, 2, 3. And three sixes or three and a half. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. So again, I'm trying to find seven sevenths because we're adding sevenths. So pause the video and try to do this one by yourself. And if you feel really confident doing this one, go ahead and do the next two by yourself. And then if you get stuck, you can always press play and I'll walk you through it. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you try to do this by yourself. So if you did, I'm going to start in the middle this time just for fun. So three sevenths and four sevenths would make one. Two sevenths and five sevenths would make one. One seventh and six sevenths would make one. And zero sevenths and seven sevenths would make one. So hopefully you got 
4. Okay, so again, hopefully you already did this one, but let's see what I get. I'm going to start in the middle again just for fun. So there's nothing to add to 4 8, so I'm just going to circle it so I know I can't add anything to that. I hope that you're seeing the pattern here, right? These two make a hoe. These two make a hoe. These two make a hoe or eight A's. And these two make a hoe. So remember, we're all about finding patterns today. So I've got one, two, three, four, and four eighths or four and a half. So look at what we had here. We had two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half. Hmm, another pattern. Describe a pattern you notice when adding the sums of fractions with even denominators as opposed to those with odd denominators. So let's go back and look at these for a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and better go whole screen here. <clears throat> so let's look at the ones that had even denominators. So remember even numbers, two, four, six, eight. So when I added the even numbers, I got two and two fourths or two and a half. When I added sixes, I got three and a half. When I got eights, when I added the eights, I got four and a half. But look at what happened when I added the odd numbers. I got two, three, and four. Hmm, do you see a pattern? I do. I'm gonna type just because I can type a little neater than I can write and a little faster too. So, so let's say when I added the even numbers, the sum was always a whole number plus one half. But when I added the odd numbers, so how do you think I should finish this? When I added the odd numbers, the sum was always what? It was just a whole number, right? There was no half. So let's go back and read that. When I added the even numbers, the sum was always a whole number plus one half. But when I added the odd numbers, the sum was always a whole number. How would the sum change if the addition started with the unit fraction rather than with zero? <clears throat> so let's go back here for a minute. How would the sum change? What would happen if you took out the zero and just started with the unit fraction? So let's just say we didn't add zero thirds. How would that change the answer? What would happen if you just added one third plus two thirds plus three thirds? What would you get? Well, these two make a whole. This makes a whole by itself. Did anything change? Does it typically change when you add zero to a number? No, because zero doesn't it means it has no value. So, how would the sums change if the addition started with the unit fraction rather than zero? They would be the same. Because zero has no value. When you add zero to something, it doesn't change. It stays the same. Okay, let's look at the back. All right, now you'll notice we have etc. etc. Do you know what this three dots mean? These just mean that you have to fill in the blanks. So we have to think about the pattern. So let's go back and look. The last number that we added together were the eights, right? So we added the eights together and we got four and four eights, which is four and a half. So what do you think would happen if I added tens? Because look, I added fours, I got two and a half. Sixes, I got three and a half. Eights, I got four and a half. What do you think is gonna happen when I add tens? Think about your pattern here. I bet we can figure this out. It's going to be five and a half. And if you don't believe me, you can write it all out and figure it out, but I'm just looking for patterns. So I went eights was four and a half, tens were five and a half. What do you think twelves will be? Six and a half. We're counting by twos, right? So, 
look at what you know about 10 and 5. Look at what you know about 12 and 6. Look at what you know about 4 and 2. Look at what you know about 6 and 3. I'm starting to see another pattern. Look at what you know about 8 and 4. What are you noticing? What do you see? I see that 5 is half a 10. I see that 6 is half a 12. Hmm. I wonder how I can use that to do these two odd numbers. Because in between 10s and 12s would be 11. And if I had this same problem and, it, and I was adding up to 11 11s, I would have what comes between 5 and a half and 6? And a half. It would be 6. So if I had 12, and that's going to be 6 and a half, <clears throat> what would 13 be? 13 would be 7, 14 would be 7 and a half, so what's 15 going to be? It's going to be 8. So how are we going to figure out 25 fifths? Let's pause the video and think about that for a minute. Okay, so I'm still looking for some more patterns and I'm thinking, hmm, I'm noticing that 5 is half of 10 but then I have this half. So think about this for a minute. What if I added 1 to the denominator? That would give me 11. What is half of 11? 5 and a half. What if I added 1 to 12? That would give me 13. What's half of 13? 6 and a half. Let's go back to that front page for a minute and see if this pattern works out. So I'm going to add 1 to the denominator, which is 4. What's half of 4? 2. I'm going to add 1 to 5, which is 6. What's half of 6? 3. I may be onto something. Let's add 1 to 7. 8. What's half of 8? 4. Let's look over here. So add 1 to 6, and that gives me 7. What's half of 7? 3 and a half. Add 1 to 9, or 8. That gives you 9. What's half of 9? 4 and a half. I think I may have found another pattern. So let's go ahead and look at this one. So what is 1 more than 15? 16. What's half of 16? 8. Let's add one more to 25. What do you get? 26. What's half of 26? You guessed it, 13. Okay, so we're all about looking for patterns today. Compare your strategy for finding the sums in problems 4, D, and F with a partner. Okay, since Today, you're probably working by yourself. We're not going to do that one today. Could you apply this strategy to find the sum of all the whole numbers from 0 to 100? Could you do that? If I said 0, 100, dot, 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 100, 100, could you find this? What was our strategy? Add 1 and divide it in half. So could you find half of 101? Well, of course you could. You could find half of 100 pretty easily. Half of 100 would be 50, and then you've got, 50, you've got one more left over. Half of 1 would be a half. So the answer is yes. The answer would be 50 and a half.
So remember, today's strategy was all about finding patterns. We could have added all of those fractions together, and we could have converted it from an improper fraction to a mixed number. We could have done that, but it would have been a little bit harder, and sometimes it's kind of fun just to look for patterns because math is a lot about patterns. So you are about to take your end of the module assessment. So you're going to be seeing some questions that go all the way back from lesson 22 to lesson 41. I suggest that you go back and take a look at what you have done in those lessons before you get started on that end of module assessment. And before you come and ask me, I want you to go back and look at your pacing guide at the lesson objectives to see if you can find your lesson that goes along with that question and look over it before you come and ask me for help. Good luck on your assessment.